All right, you beautiful people, welcome back. In the last video, we learned about the async event loop and how to execute coroutines. In this video, we will learn about the last piece of the puzzle called the await keyword. The main difference between the async and the await keyword is that the async keyword is used to create a coroutine while the await keyword is used to pause the coroutine. So whenever you want to wait for a coroutine to get finished before going forward, you use the await keyword. So let's actually see it in action. So we are gonna just import our async IO module. After that, we are just gonna create a very simple coroutine which calculates the square of a number. So let's call it square. And inside that, we are gonna take the value of our number and we're just gonna return our squared number by multiplying it by itself. So now let's just run it by using the wrong way and see how it looks. So let's store the value inside a variable called sq and let's the pass, pass the value of five and let's actually print this out if it prints anything at all and let's run this and see what it gives us. So let's actually, let me just actually clear this terminal so that is more clear to see. And it says runtime warning coroutine square was never awaited. So let's actually try it awaiting it this time. So let's actually write an await over here in front of our coroutine and let's run it again and clear the terminal. And now it says syntax error await outside function. So now we know the second thing about await keyword. The first thing is that it's used to pause a coroutine and the second thing is that await should always be inside a coroutine function and not outside a coroutine function. So as you can see, it's not inside our async square method and it's outside it. So let's actually see how we can fix that. So let's create another coroutine and this time we're just gonna call it main. And inside this, we are gonna create a variable of x and we are want the square of a number. So let's just type in square and we want the square of a number, let's say five. And we're gonna print out the value of x and uh, let's take another number. Let's uh, create a value of five. Uh, let's create a variable of y and inside that we are gonna get a square of the value of 10. And let's actually print that out too. And just for fun, what we can also do is we can add both of them together. So we are just gonna do x plus y and let's print out the value of our z variable. And now to run a coroutine, we have already learned that we just need to write an async io dot run. And inside that we need to write our coroutine. And in this case, we want to run our main method, which in turn is going to run our square coroutine. So now let's actually run this and see how it looks. Now it says square coroutine was never awaited. Now it's inside our main coroutine. So we can actually write an await over here and we can do the same thing of uh, for y and we're going to discuss the flow and what it means writing a weight over here a little bit later but first let's actually run this and see what it gives us so now if we run this it will give us the value of 25 which is the square of 5 and the square of 100 and add both of them together it gives us 125 so how this program actually works so what happens is it first the program first sees our coroutine of square and then it sees our coroutine of main and it wants to run this coroutine by creating an event loop using our async io dot run and it goes to this main coroutine and then it goes to this x line this line 11th line of x equals to await square 5. so what it this await does is that it pauses this main coroutine and it jumps to the square coroutine where it calculates the square of the number of 5 and then it prints that out and the same happens with this y line what happens is that it sees this await keyword, so it pauses this main coroutine and then it jumps to the square coroutine over here, calculates the square of 10 and prints that out and then we simply add both of them together and print that out. Now you might see this, hey, this actually looks like a synchronous program, like we don't have to do all this await thing, we can just simply write a program, it will do the same thing, it's not doing anything asynchronously. And you're kind of correct we can it's kind of working like a synchronous program but what we will learn in the next video is how to combine all the things that we have learned in the last three videos combine all of them together and see a real life scenario we'll be using asynchronous programming to actually save time these are just like the learning blocks the basics to make you understand what is this await keyword what is a coroutine what is an event loop and now that you have understood all of that we are going to combine all of them and we are going to see a real life example of how asynchronous programming works. So I'll see you in the next video.